Good afternoon. I hope this finds you doing well. I hope that uh, you're staying warm. Up in uh, northern Missouri, we're having a bit of a cold snap, unexpected, and uh, so I hope you're able to stay out of the wind. Uh, this is Holy Week, and so right now, this is Monday, Thursday, the, the Thursday before Easter, as we're going to celebrate and remember uh, when Jesus gathers with his disciples for the Last Supper. Tomorrow, that'll be uh, tonight at 6, if you're watching this on Thursday. Uh, and then tomorrow is Good Friday. There'll be a video for that. And then uh, I do have a short video for Saturday. And then there'll be uh, a video for Easter. So today, Thursday, I want you to think about the family meal when you sit down for Thanksgiving. When you sit down for Thanksgiving, there is a menu. It's a pretty fixed menu, right? We, we all know what's on the menu. You go to Thanksgiving, you're going to have turkey. Green beans, you're going to have some potatoes, rolls, like we, we know what's on the menu for Thanksgiving. And if you're watching this with somebody, I, I'm going to ask you to, to just look, at, look right at the screen, just look at the screen, and don't make eye contact as you think to yourself the answer to this question. I don't want anyone to self-incriminate. I'm going to ask, is there a dish that always shows up at Thanksgiving that you really don't want to eat. Right? That dish that you're, you can put it on your plate. Someone can put it on a plate for you. Someone can say, here, have a serving of your, your aunts, your uncles or whatever, your brother made this and, and, and you, you nod and it goes on your plate and you just know that you're gonna push that aside. And you're gonna, you're just not gonna touch it. Let, let's say hypothetically, you know, just hypothetically here for the sake of argument, that my dad makes a corn casserole and has for many, 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 many years. Let's say, for example, just again hypothetically, that my dad has known what I will and will not eat since before I had the words to say what I don't like. And that in general, if I can get a fork in it, I'll eat it with these four exceptions. Mushrooms, peanut butter, bananas, and peppers. I don't eat peppers. They are kryptonite to me. The taste just soaks through things and I just, I don't eat peppers. I have never eaten a pepper. And so my dad has made corn casserole for years with slivered green peppers. Put it down on the Thanksgiving table and there have been servings of that that have gone on to my plate, but I haven't touched it because I just don't, I don't like peppers. And it doesn't matter who looks at me, how sad they look, doesn't matter my wife, it doesn't matter how my wife kicks me under the table, I ain't gonna eat that, doesn't matter. I'm not gonna eat it. It has peppers, I don't like them. I want you to imagine, to take this moment, right? I want you to, to take it to Passover. As we're thinking about the Passover meal that Jesus eats with his disciples, the Passover meal has an equally set menu as on Thanksgiving. The Passover meal has a set menu, and more even than, than a Thanksgiving meal, Passover meal is set because what is put on the table has meanings to it, right? There is a, a roasted lamb that's put on the table, and the roasted lamb it is the connection between God and God's people, the, the blood of the lamb that's put on top of the doorpost as God's angel goes across Egypt and passes over the uh, houses that are marked with the blood. Like that is the connection, the sacrifice between God and God's people. So that's the, you gotta you got eat the lamb, right? And, and then there's the bitter herbs that, that uh, connect you to the, uh, to this, the bitterness of slavery. And then there's the heroset, which is the apple salad that, um, or connects you to the mortar that was used to hold together the bricks that the slaves were forced to make. And then there's all the different pieces of Passover. There's a parsley or some greens to represent, uh, to connect to the, the hope of spring. Like there's all these pieces of this meal laid out as you sit down and as you eat this. And these are all essential to telling the story of Passover. And Passover is always a story told in the present tense, that we are being saved right now. Right? We are being taken out of slavery. We are being uh, saved by what God is doing. It's a present tense act. 
active telling of the story that expects that God is still working right here amongst us. And imagine for a moment that you don't like the bitter herbs. I wouldn't blame you. I'm not sure I would like them either. You don't want to take the bitter herbs and take a big old bite of those bitter herbs any more than I wanted to take a bite of that corn casserole full of slivered green peppers. Yeah, right? The difference is you can't tell the story of Passover without telling the story of the bitterness of slavery. You got to eat the bitter herbs. You have to, right? It's like... It's not just like offending a family member if you don't eat the bitter herbs. You're not connecting to the story of what makes God's people God's people. Like, this is essential to who they are. They have to do it, right? Got to eat the bitter herbs at Passover. And that's the meal that Jesus is serving to his disciples. That's the meal we're remembering this evening on the Thursday before Easter. As Jesus gathered with his disciples the night on, up on the night in which he was betrayed, he gives his uh, disciples this meal and he serves it to them. And he wraps up like all the pieces and all the aspects of his ministry, the, the humble service, like he washes their feet as they come in to eat this meal. And he is putting their needs first, making sure they have the meal that will sustain them while he is arrested and reconnecting them with the love of God, that, that God will take care of them when he's the one who's about to go, I have a very, very rough couple days, right? And, and so Jesus is wrapping up all, everything that he is, is sort of in that meal in a very real sense. And looking at this, I have to, I mean, and you look at the way that like Jesus serves whoever's at this meal. Jesus I mean, we talk about turning the other cheek. Like, there are parts of Jesus' ministry that we struggle to embrace, that we struggle to say, you know what, I like Jesus' ministry, but that right there, like, that's hard. And you think about it, like, turning the other cheek, forgiving your enemy. Jesus washed Judas's feet. Like, Jesus washes the feet of the person who betrays him and then serves him uh, the, the meal. Like, there are parts of the ministry, there are parts of following in the footsteps of Jesus that I don't like the parts where you're reading the gospel and you go, seriously, Jesus? Like the gospel, of the, the parable of the workers in the vineyard where you have everyone being paid the same and some people work all day and some people work an hour. And I look at that and I go, seriously, Jesus? I'm not so sure about that. Praying for God's kingdom when sometimes I'd rather just have my own way. Looking at how Jesus goes over to touch the leper and, and, and thinking about who is the modern day leper and realizing how little I want to go over and, and engage with the leper. Like these are the things I'm thinking about as I look at how Jesus is wrapping up this meal and, and, and he's wrapping up his ministry. When it's time for Thanksgiving, you eat what's on the table. Why? Because it's the Thanksgiving meal and everything on the table was cooked with love for you by your family and it's what makes your family your family. Right? I would argue that if you want to know who your family members are, look at who sits at the table with you at Thanksgiving or, or, or other holidays like that. Right? As with Passover, when you sit down to eat Passover, you eat the bitter herbs. Why? Because that's part of what Passover is. You eat the bitter herbs because that's part of what, telling the story that makes the Jewish people the Jewish people. And it's the same when it comes to the ministry of Jesus. There are parts of the ministry of Jesus that I'm not particularly excited about following in those exact footsteps, but it is the entire journey. It is following in all of the footsteps of Jesus is what is salvific. That is what connects us to Jesus. It is what brings us on the journey towards the kingdom of God and allows us to walk through this life towards death and have faith that the other side, there will be God's kingdom. And so we look at it all. Sometimes it's bitter herbs, sometimes it's corn casserole that has those peppers in it, but it's all part of the meal. It's all part of what we need. Everything that Jesus does are the footsteps that we follow. Thanks be to God. And I should give you a postscript too. About three or four years ago, my dad did stop putting in the green peppers. And so if you would like to have a recipe for a truly excellent corn casserole recipe, 
let me know and I'm sure my dad can hook you up. I'm really looking forward to eating that corn casserole with my dad and all of my family this Thanksgiving this fall. Amen.